Hey, what is up guys? My name is Rune Firestorm, and today we have another tutorial. This one's gonna be about raising spike traps. And also lowering, but that'd be too long of a title, so I'm keeping it at, I'm keeping it at raising spike traps. Anyways, this will be one of two tutorials that will be released on very close to each other actually, because they pretty much go hand in hand, but do not revolve around the same topic, so I will not be covering them both in one tutorial. With that said and done, we're going to be going over, well, this tutorial. And uh, there is a problem that did occur with this tutorial, but I'll be explaining that in the demonstration, so look out for that. Alright, that said, let's begin. Alright, so I'm going to talk about what the tutorial is about, technically. Uh, basically, in this tutorial, we'll be talking about raising spike traps using the... Uh, well, using movement routes, event movement routes, so we can show off how to make a spike trap. It's not really that important, but I thought I'd cover it in this tutorial anyways. And we're gonna be doing, well, we're gonna be uh, creating spike traps similar to that of, Paper Mar of the Paper Mario series, where when you uh, take damage from a spike trap, you will be sent to a quote unquote safe spot, which we'll be covering later. And, uh, well, this is so the player doesn't constantly get hit by the spike traps. Anyways, we'll be also covering variables and switches in this, in this section, so let's go on with it. As for variables, there are only three, and uh, two of them revolve around controlling the player's X and Y coordinates, which we'll be doing in a parallel event later. We also have a variable checking for the safe spot number, as I earlier explained. Uh, this will dictate what safe spot the player will go to based on what was the last safe spot they hit. Again, we'll cover that later. As for switches, we only have one, and that's basically to tell the player that they are now able to be affected by the spike traps and able to get hurt. Yeah, not really too special. These other two are for uh, out of sight and veil, so we don't have to worry about those. Anyways, we also have, we also technically have plugins for this one, but. It has more to do with the uh, problem that I encountered with this particular tutorial, which basically, uh, I'll say this for now, uh, you may need a dash disabling plugin, or at least a plugin that'll be able to disable dash at certain points, because in this tutorial I did actually turn off dash in this particular map, and dashing will cause problems, which Again, I will explain later. Anyways, uh, we will go on to the next topic right now. Alright, now we will be talking about how we're going to be animating these spike traps. So here we have uh, three events. Uh, they basically are just this spike uh, looking animation right here, image. And uh, we won't be touching them that much, except for the fact that we do want the priority to be uh, below characters, which is by default, watch well, enough. Since it's an, it's an event with an image, they will set the priority the same as characters. We do actually want to put them to set the pri uh, we do want to set the priority to below characters so that well players can step across across them. And as this note says, we won't actually be doing much with it on its own. We'll be controlling actually all three of these with uh, an event here. Now we do also want to try to give them a, a recognizable name so we can easily find them in. Uh, while well, we're checking for movement routes. Anyways, going on to this event here is where we'll be doing all our animation. There are a list of steps here, but I'll basically summarize them along the way. Uh, first off, we'll be starting off with a loop. Now, we're gonna be doing this so that the spike traps constantly lower and raise automatically without, say, well, basically not after after one cycle has taken place. We do just want it to keep looping. I don't t technically parallel does that? I'm not sure. Anyways, we'll be going on first by turning on the switch within the movement routes for each of these. Actually, we only need to do that for one of these. Don't mind the fact that it's here in all three, though it doesn't really affect much when it's in all three. We turn on switch 1, which is the uh, spike checking switch that I mentioned earlier. We'll then be playing a sound effect. Now, we only want a, 
we only want one of these movement routes. So if you had like 10 spikes, you only want you still want only one of those uh, movement routes to contain a sound effect, so that you're not having overlapping sound effects. So as you can see here, only the first one has SE for Sword 3, and each of the spikes do not have the uh, sound effect. I don't know why I called it SE. Maybe I just got tired of saying sound effect. Anyways, uh, to be to make the animation of the spikes change, we're gonna be having it turn left, turn right, then turn up. Where where uh, turn up will be when the spikes are completely out or completely raised, and then we'll have it wait for a little bit so that the players, or at least the players, will have time to react to it. And uh, then we'll be basically reversing the order of what happened here. And then we'll have the spike turn right, turn left, then turn down. I mean, I guess this doesn't make sense if you don't know how to do this, basically. But basically, it's kind of like a character. We want the spikes to, to turn, and like a character, turning has its own set of animations. Which is what we're doing here. And we're going to actually end it off with the uh, character turning down, which is its default position, where all the spikes are lowered. And we'll also be turning off switch one here, which again, does not get affected when all three of them have this switch turned off at this particular point in time. And we'll also have the, have the uh, uh, well, the entire movie routes wait for 180 frames, because we also want the player to be able to traverse safely, otherwise they won't have time to traverse. Well, without like an ability like out of sight or veil, but that's not really the point. Besides that, you also do want to make sure that the events for the spikes, or at least one of them, has uh, the option for wait for completion turned on. Particularly the last one, because like if you put the wait for completion, if you, if you put this first movement route as wait for completion, then you have to wait for this one, and then the other two will. It's just basically keep in mind that you want this last event that will be playing alongside the others to have the wait for completion option checked. Anyways, that's it for the animation for spike traps. Uh, now we'll actually talk about the spike trap effects and safe spots. All right, going on to the animation of well, the effects of the spikes, not the animation. We talked about that last section. But uh, let's go over the safe spots first, because they actually are the simplest part of this tutorial. Anyways, here we have safe spot number one, and basically, if you're landing on this first spike, and you're getting hit by the spike, you'll be sent to this safe spot. However, if you happen to cross this safe spot, and then hit a spike, you'll be sent to that safe spot. Which is what we're doing by controlling variables. So we'll be control controlling variables for safe spot to be one, because this is safe spot number one. And likewise for two, well, I guess unlikewise, we'll be changing this one to uh, for a value of two, so we know it's safe spot number two. Going on to this complicated event right here, we have lots of notes because it's very complicated. We'll start off by controlling the variables in a parallel event for the player's x and y coordinates. Now we'll be doing this with control variable, game data, and a map x of the player character. Huh. Apparently I didn't realize that you can check for the events and events map X or Y, so that might make a part in Veil and Out of Sight seem rather complicated, but we'll be getting to that next tutorial. Anyways, we'll be sending player X and player Y to map X and map Y a player, respectively. And uh, this actual conditional branch right here, actually this conditional branch right here is actually for Out of Sight and Veil, so we don't need to worry about that. Now we go into another conditional branch. If now spiking is on, aka when the spikes are able to hit the player and make contact with them, we'll be checking if the player's x and y coordinates are at the particular coordinates that a spike is on. Now you can check coordinates by uh, checking the bottom right of RPG Maker if you did not know that. If you didn't know that. And uh, let's see for the spike, it's 1244, this one's 13, this one's 14, etc. etc. Going back to this event here, now we're gonna actually, since all these spike traps are aligned in a row, uh, we'll only be uh, checking the 
player's Y position once at all times. But obviously, if you have more spike traps that are in different Y positions or whatever, uh, you do want to check the Y position multiple times. Anyways, well, at least in multiple instances. We'll then be checking if player X is equal to 12, and respectively, we'll also, be, we'll also want to be checking for her 13 and 14 as well. And now we'll be getting actually to the, to the entire meat of it. I don't know what the word would be here, actually. If conditions are met, the process will begin, starting with a little animation. So we'll be playing a pierce effect animation on the player. Wait in 10 frames. And then the player will be sent to the last save spot. Now this is the part where you have to adjust to each of the positions that the spikes are at. So since the... Uh, this particular spike trap is one right to this to this safe spot. We'll only be moving the player to the left, but minus one plus zero, the jump. Direction fix is direction fix is optional here, by the way. And if the player touches the safe spot number two, then we'll be having the player jump three spaces to the right, as seen here. Uh, we'll be going, we'll be covering the common events, but I'd like to mention that, as I said earlier, you do want to adjust this. For the uh, for each of these spike traps, so if you're in this middle tile here, uh, you do want to make this uh, in order to get to the safe spot number one. You want to move to the left and to the right. You want to move uh, two spaces to the right, and so on and so forth. Going on to the common events, which to be honest, the only reason I'm using the common event here is because uh, I do not want to copy and paste. Because apparently I'm just that lazy. First, a sound will play, and an animation, well, another animation will play after the player has already been moved to a safe spot. The party will take some damage, uh, 10 in this case, which is not very much because the default HP is 450, but it's inconsequential enough that it doesn't really matter. And then, to ensure that multiple repeated attempts aren't encouraged, so that the player doesn't keep taking damage in one uh, spike rotation, or cycle, whatever you prefer. We'll be having the player wait for 60 seconds. Or, wait, no, that's that's a lie. 60 seconds is a minute. 60 frames, which is one second. Uh, if you want to play like in like a like a player... I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say there. I don't know how to explain it. The player damage image, you could. But in this case, I'm not doing that. Anyways, I think we're going on to the demonstration because that this tutorial is quite short. Alright, so see you there. Alright, we are here at the demonstration and... Uh, also, you may have noticed that I put some uh, vases off to the right there so I don't make the enemy move too far. Anyways, uh, actually, I don't think the, does the enemy move at all? That doesn't really matter. We have, Okay, it does move. But we do have dash toggled or dash turned off for this map, as I mentioned earlier. Now the reason why we actually have dash turned off is because if you actually dash while you're going through the spikes, you actually pass through two of them. Well, you pass through multiple. So fast that you'll be only under the effects of the... F well... I think it's because parallel events can't... Man. How much am I gonna explain this? Basically, if you're dashing through these spikes here and you dash to, say, the middle spike, it may still think that you're on the first spike, which means it'll only move you, say, to safe spot. It's gonna try to move your safe spot number one, but since you're on the middle spike instead of the left spike, you'll be only moved one to the left, right on top of, you know, a different spike, which isn't good, which is why a dash plugin or a dash toggling plugin might be uh, good here. Anyways, we have Rune Fire here, the Dimensional Duelist, who has 450 HP. As mentioned earlier, the spikes will do 10 damage each time we hit them. Now we'll be stepping on safe spot number one here, stepping onto this first spike. And we got hit by one. Hopefully I turned on the volume in this game, because man, it's kind of loud. We got hit by one, and we had like a little bit of lat latency in there. Well, I guess we caused the latency. Basically, wait for 60 frames, and uh, we took 10 damage, which is exactly what we want. Now we're gonna go all the way to the, across the other side, so we can go to safe spot number two. 
triggering an invisible uh, checker. We're gonna hit this right spot here, which actually does take us to spot number two, which is again on the right side. And we took 10 more damage, which is, well, it seems like it's going according to plan. But yeah, basically, that's it for this tutorial. This demonstration is very short. And again, that dash toggle plugin, or any dash toggle plugin, might help here. So with that, we'll be going on to the outro. See you there. Hey there, you've made it to the end of the video because this tutorial is actually shorter than uh, Adam's and Veil, which is surprising. Well, I say that because, but I haven't recorded Adam's and Veil yet. I just know that part has lots of segments. Anyways, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Now this tutorial, um, again, hopefully I'm going to be uploading this along with the uh, Adam's and Veil on very nearby days, so I can, well, again, they go hand in hand. Uh, I do have another tutorial planned, and hopefully I'll be releasing that on my birthday, because uh, the topic of that tutorial is kind of related to something I like, kind of? I don't know. It's just an interest I've been interested in. It's not really an... Think, okay, think of it less of an RPG mechanic and more like a minigame. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I don't say this in Out of Sight in Veil tutorial because that'd be, that'd be weird. Uh, anyways, I will see you all in the Out of Sight, well, I'll see maybe a portion of you at the Out of Sight in Veil tutorial. So with that said, thank you all so much for watching. See you guys and stay safe. Bye.